Welcome to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance, a ministry of the Sunday School Publishing Board, where we focus on teaching, engaging, application, and learning for teachers and students. I will be sharing highlights and key points from the Adult Faith Pathway Bible Study Sunday School book and the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary based on the International Lesson Series. We are continuing our study in the spring quarter of Sunday School Lessons. The theme for this quarter is Prophets Faithful to God's Covenant. This quarter introduces the ministry of the Old Testament prophets. We begin our study in this week's lesson in Unit 2, Prophets of Restoration. This week we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The resurrection is the central message of the Christian gospel and the most important faith tenet of the Christian church. This week we will look at the agony, humiliation, and triumph of the suffering servant Jesus Christ. Get your Sunday school book, Bible, notepad, pen, or device and follow along as we take a glimpse into this week's Sunday school lesson. Now let's get started with this marvelous lesson. The lesson title for this week, April the 4th, is Finding Hope in the Midst of Oppression. And this is the title in the adult book. The title in the Sunday School Commentary is The Suffering Servant Brings Salvation. Our background scripture is Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13 through chapter 53, verse 12, and Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 35. The print passage is Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 through 11. Our key verse in this week's lesson is, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. And that's Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, the New International Version. Here are three questions to consider and reflect on as we go through this week's lesson. Question number one, who is the suffering servant? Question number two, what does this lesson say about the suffering servant's substitutionary death? And question number three, what is the source of hope for everyone today? Let's look at our lesson context. Our lesson text is in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet who lived and preached during some of the most turbulent times in the history of Judah. The prophet Isaiah was called and commissioned by God to minister to the nation of Judah, the southern kingdom, and the city of Jerusalem, Judah's capital. Isaiah prophesied to a nation full of corruption that had turned away from the Lord God. And we read this in Isaiah chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. He called upon the people to turn from evil wash themselves spiritually and seek justice. And again, we see this in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16. He called the people to turn their lives of sin and warn them of God's judgment and punishment. Isaiah is quoted 66 times in the New Testament and there are more than 340 New Testament references to his writing. With the exception of Psalms, Isaiah is quoted more than any other Old Testament book. The book of Isaiah contains both prose and poetry and uses personification. Also, many of his prophecies contain predictions that foretell a soon to occur event and a distant future event at the same time. The 39 chapters in the first half of Isaiah generally carry the message of judgment for sin. The 27 chapters in the second half of Isaiah 
generally bring a message of forgiveness, comfort, and hope. Isaiah speaks more about the Messiah than does any other Old Testament prophets. Among the most important prophecies of Isaiah are those that looked forward to the coming of the Messiah, as we will study in this week's lesson. This week's lesson foreshadows events that were not happening at the time, but would happen in the future. The prophetic words of Isaiah announced the hope of the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. The prominent character in this lesson is the suffering servant. The lesson aims in this week's lesson are, as a result of studying and experiencing this lesson, you should be able to, number one, identify the connections between the suffering servant Isaiah and the resurrected Christ in Luke chapter 24. The second lesson aim is affirm the joy of knowing that the suffering servant is the resurrected Jesus Christ. And lesson aim number three, share the story of the suffering servant who is the resurrected Jesus Christ. As we continue our glimpse into this week's Sunday School lesson, I'm going to share two key points from each outline in the lesson text and expound some on each one. There are three outlines presented in the Adult Faith Pathway Sunday School book in this week's lesson. Outline number one, the suffering servant's agony, and that's Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 through 6. The second outline is the suffering servant's humiliation, and that's Isaiah chapter 53 verses 7 through 9. And the third outline is the suffering servant's triumph. And that's Isaiah chapter 53, verses 10 and 11. Let's look at the first outline, the suffering servant's agony. God was pulling aside the curtain of time to let the people of Isaiah's day look ahead to the suffering of the future Messiah and the resulting forgiveness made available to all mankind. Verse 4. And I'm reading from the New International Version, and it reads, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. And verse 5, But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. Key point number one, the suffering servant that Isaiah spoke of would perform the ultimate act of love, a substitutionary death that God required to atone for human sin. Through his substitutionary death, the suffering servant took on himself all the sins of humanity. The suffering servant was completely sinless, but... He was willing to die for our sins. The servant's substitutionary suffering involved being pierced, wounded, and crushed, bruised for the rebellion, transgression, and the sins and iniquities of the people. And we saw this in verse 5. The Messiah suffered for our sakes, bearing our sins to make us acceptable to God. What can wash away my sins, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Our spiritual wounds were healed by the physical agony Jesus endured at crucifixion. Key point number two, Jesus, God's suffering servant, paid the sin debt in full so that all who come to him may find peace with God and joy in his presence. Verse six, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we see this in Romans chapter 3, verse 9, and Romans chapter 3, verse 23. 
In verse 6, Isaiah speaks of Israel straying from God and compares them to wandering sheep. According to Isaiah 53, 6, God laid the iniquity of the sins of the world on Jesus and allowed Jesus to suffer as if he had committed sin. The second outline, the suffering servant's humiliation. Key point number one. The suffering servant faced his substitutionary death willingly and submissively without protest or struggle. Verse 7. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. His meek spirit has been compared to the quiet disposition of a sheep facing the shear or slaughter in verse 7. As the Lamb of God, the suffering servant did not resist, protest, or defend himself. God's own people deserved punishment, but God laid that punishment on the servant who died in our place. God allowed Jesus to pay the redemptive price for our sins. He paid our sin debt. After being arrested, bound, and sentenced to death, Jesus faced the humiliation of a cruel public death for the sins of others. And we see this in verse 8. As we see in verse 9a, Isaiah accurately prophesied that those who crucified Jesus intended to bury him among the wicked. Instead, he was buried in a rich man's donated tomb. Key point number two. Although Jesus had committed no sin, God allowed him to be offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through him. And we see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. In obedience to the Father's will, the servant endured the humiliation of the cross to pay the penalty for the guilt and shame that belonged to us, to all of us. And we see this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. The third outline, the suffering servant's triumph. Key point number one, Jesus willingly laid down his life as the sacrifice for our sins. It was God's will that the servant would suffer and die as the guilt offering for the sins of the world. And we see this in verse 10a. His offspring, as noted in verse 10b, is everyone who believed that God has raised him from the dead and has been born again. Because Jesus obeyed God and overcame death, all of God's children may find eternal life through him. And we see this in verse 10b and also see Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 through 11. Verse 11, after he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Key point number two, the servant's triumph over sin and death is the source of hope for all. Isaiah concludes the chapter by emphasizing that all who believe in the Messiah will be made righteous through their acceptance of him, Jesus Christ. In summary, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed me white as snow. Jesus shed his blood on Calvary's cross for your sins and my sins. I thank God for what the suffering servant did at Calvary. Because of what the suffering servant did on the cross, there remains hope for the lost, restoration for the backslidden, and the promise of an eternal future in the future. In the future. Yet, even in the very worst of times, God's people have the assurance of a present hope and help through Jesus the Messiah, who willingly 
became God's suffering servant and gave his life for the sins of the world. Thank you for tuning in to Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. I hope this glimpse of this week's Sunday School Lesson will help you in your preparation as you prepare to teach and study God's Word. For additional information and resources, contact the Sunday School Publishing Board. Blessings to you until the next Sunday School Lesson at a Glance. We invite you to join us each week as we take a glimpse into the Sunday School Lesson. Subscribe now.